atmosphere here in Fort Worth. Tough road test for the Sooners. And make no mistake about it, the playoff begins today for Oklahoma as they take on TCU. For college football fan is you've got best on best, good on good, as coaches like to say. You've got the best offense in the, in the conference, the most explosive offense in the conference. And I think both Lincoln Riley from an offensive perspective and Gary Patterson, whose defense leads on a defensive perspective, they love it. They covet this kind of chess match of strength versus strength, and so do I. Oklahoma with the longest true road game win streak in college football on the line. And there's not been much luck for TCU against OU of late. The third time these two teams will meet in the last 12 games. As last year they closed out the season of the Big 12 championship game. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart. Allison Williams. Oklahoma won the toss, deferred their option to the second half. So here comes a struggling TCU offense. Saw 14 turnovers in the last 13 quarters. Since TCU made it 33-28 late against Ohio State, they have struggled. Alana Lua on first down, picks up a couple of yards. Yeah, and this is a proud state champion. You just heard Allison talk about Kyler on the other side. Well, Sean Robinson went 15-0. He was a Gatorade State Player of the Year. Yeah, and it's not been an easy ride for him. A lot of moving pieces up front does not make his job easier. And he came to the sidelines a week ago and said, where are the big plays? Just not making enough plays. Screen to Turpin. And he's about three yards shy of a first down. And this may be a defense to do it against, and it's a defense that's going to look a little different today. It's a defense, in my opinion, that's got to be run by those big boys up front. Mike Stoops out, fired during the bye week. And I always judge a defense's energy on the road by their front four. I think they're the easiest tell to see how wired and ready they are to play. Four-man rush on third down. Robinson, long throw to the sideline, and he's got his man. Nigel Meekin with a first down catch out to the 39. Gain of eight. That's a big time throw now. That's all the way across the field. That's not a, hey, I got a struggling quarterback and let's just run a little bubble screen. That is a deep out from the far hash all the way across the field. That, that ball is in the air 35 yards on the money to move the chains. Zone read. Cut back for Robinson. Bottled up. He picked up a yard. And this is the element where he's probably struggling the most. When he was that Gatorade State Player of the Year, he did it with his arm, he did it with his legs. You can see the harness on his left shoulder. He took a serious and significant shoulder injury on a run against Iowa State. And in talking to Sonny yesterday, the run game is where he feels it the most. Would you want to run him today if you were TCU then? I think you have to show that look to Oklahoma, and especially early. Alana Lua fights his way through a couple of tackles at the line of scrimmage and pushes the pile for two and a half. So it will be third down and six. True freshman Ronnie Perkins made the stop for Ruffin McNeil. Yeah, he's right in the middle and he takes over. Not the first time he's done this. In fact, the third time that he's been elevated a couple other times to head coach this time to defensive coordinator. I expect a simplified plan. I think you'll see some freshmen you've not seen this year. And they want cleats in the ground and face masks forward, not the indecision well, they had in that shootout with Texas. Four-man rush, stepping up. Robinson flagged down, and he's brought down. So Oklahoma has a third down stop and most likely drew a holding penalty as well. Yeah, they did. I think that's going to be on the on the big right guard, Wes Harris, on a blitzing Curtis Bolton, something he does best. There is no foul on the play for holding. The, the defender's feet got tangled up. It's the reason he went to the ground. Fourth down. Well, I like the clarification. And if you're Oklahoma, you love that kind of aggressive defensive mindset. It was going to be right here, right in the middle of your screen. You could see Bolton, the linebacker. Yeah, defender trips out, but I think there's also an awfully big tug at the jersey. Short kick. And Hollywood Brown will let it roll inside the 20. 
all the way down to about the 16 yard line. Signing bonus. He may not be five tools as a quarterback, but the only one he's missing is height. And he more than makes up for it in every other significant, significant way. He's got a rocket arm, and he's got the quickest feet you're going to see at that position in college football. That's a deep stable of tailbacks, too. And one of those is Trey Sermon against a different level defense than maybe they've seen so far this year. It's a gain of two on first down. Well, Gary Patterson said it's the fastest. It's not the biggest, it's not the strongest, but as far as speed goes, and it's speed on speed with Hollywood Brown and Murray and Lamb and the rest of these Sooners, one of the fastest on paper he's seen. Play action for Murray. Well protected, wide open. He's got the fullback, Carson Meyer. First down and then some out to the 35. Guys, Kyler Murray, obviously a great baseball player drafted by the A's. So I asked him, being a game of failure in baseball, if there's any lessons from that that he applied after that loss to Texas two weeks ago, he said no. He goes, baseball is an individual sport played as a team game. You deal with failure differently. He absolutely hates to lose, and he admitted it took him some time to get past that loss to Texas. Even though his offense put 45 on the board, in the loss, he's got a first down here after a gain of 16. Sermon's got a crease, gets to the sideline. Near the 50 before he's finally brought down. And this Trayvon is, Merrick Woodard made and, the stop. And we highlighted, Bob, the stats. And this is why they're the best in this conference. Because you've got all league performers up and down that offensive line. This is not just throw it out on the perimeter. It's a beautiful balance of run and pass. Four-man rush. There goes Marquise Brown. Hollywood jitterbugging for a first down. He's got 11 more. Lincoln Riley, as far as a former quarterback that's sitting up in a booth as an analyst today. I think if you surveyed all of us, Greasy, Herbie, Blackledge, Craig McElroy, everybody else, Andre Ware, they'd all say the same thing. As far as playmaking goes, creating plays, not just the players on the field that make plays. That guy makes them first. And he's had a bye week to get ready. And man, there have been some tremendous wrinkles here. That's Brown out of the backfield. It was a tight end hidden between a guard and tackle earlier. Seeing the advantage of a couple weeks to prepare for TCU. Nine yards per play. That's ridiculous. Draw play here to Sermon. Well, from behind, and brought down by Terrell Cooper, picked up four. And I think all my peers would say the same thing. It's not just a simple little scheme. They mix so much variety with an incredible tempo. And Gary Patterson knows this is the most difficult animal that he tries to tangle with. Murray out of the pocket. Might be where he's at his most dangerous. C.D. Lamb. It's a walk-in touchdown. That yeah, was the tight end earlier hidden between a guard and tackle. This time it is C.D. Lamb at wide receiver, but this is the danger. And you're going to see C.D. come right across the field, and these linebackers and these guys have to come up. Once Murray breaks containment, there is no question. That is where he's most dangerous. And then it's gone. And you don't see green grass in open field against Gary Patterson's defense, really against anybody else. The touchdown is good after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the scoring team, number two and number five. Austin Seibert handles the place kicking duties as well as the punting duties for Oklahoma. And he's perfect on the point after. 7-0, C.D. Lamb celebrated the touchdown with Marquise Brown. I guess a little too much. C.D. Lamb, Marquise Brown called for unsportsmanlike conduct on the touchdown celebration. Jim Blackwood, longtime on-field official and supervisor of officials in the WAC and the Pac-12 with us here at TCU. And Jim, the correct call? Correct call because it was choreographed, and that's why it was called. So even though it was not derogatory, even though it's not anything really negative, you just can't have that choreographed action? That's technical, but it was called because it's choreographed. Let's see what kind of field position TCU gets out of it. Turpin from the two-yard line as Cyber kicked it deep from the 20. Turpin, he's got a lay. He's got the kicker to beat. There goes Cavante Turpin. Touchdown, TCU. Exactly what these Horn Frogs need. They have to win that phase of the game if they got any shot today. At least I got it. Yeah, Allison a... had her 
TCU starter set on yesterday. She was equipped. Here's Marcelia Sutton. Breaking tackles and fights his way to the 30 yard line. For him, picking a fumble, but entire program that puts that negativity behind him. Impressive. Sermon. For a yard and a half. If you're Gary Patterson on the other side, you know that these guys had a little extra time and they had some really incredible wrinkles on that first drive. 14 yards of play on that opening drive for a group that averages nearly nine a play on the season. And way too many guys in way too many open spaces on that opening drive to see the Horn Frogs adjust a little tighter in their coverage as best they can. Only a three man rush. Crosser is Brown. Extra step to the sideline that just can't catch him. Well, it doesn't look like his feet are even touching the ground when he gets in a full stride. And when you're a safety or a linebacker and you're dropping, you've seen shallow crosses. That is a concept that, well, Mike Leach, you're going to see tonight on the Palouse, where Sonny Cumbie and Lincoln Riley learned this. That's just what they call mesh. Two receivers running underneath, and typically a safety or linebacker getting a drop and see it and then react and respond and still contain it. Now with that guy, you have got to be a step ahead. Right up the gut, it's Sermon. He picks up six on first down. And this guy, what do you tell us? Seven miles a game, walking and pacing and on the field, and he calls these signals. He's looking right now at what Oklahoma is doing with their personnel group. And he's going to give a signal, and you can see the guys on the field all looking at him. He is signaling every single play, and then those guys got to distribute the calls to everybody and make sure with moving pieces now, they're all on the same page. On a keeper, it's Murray. And he will slide to the 40-yard line. And I thought what was interesting, Brock, your take. Oklahoma, they're just going to play most likely with face masks forward defensively. But all of the communication that goes on in the second and third level yes. of the TCU defense after they get this call. And you can see it, eyes are over there. And the guy's ability is to process. So they get the call from him. And then at times, they can even change it. But having to communicate it, nobody in college football does that level of communication I think at a higher level than what the Horn Frogs do defensively. Murray, a little screen out to Brown. This time they've got him bottled up. Up against the sideline. Terrific play by Trayvon Merrick Woodard. That's a tackle for a loss of five. And guys, knowing how important it is, especially in the second level of that defense, to process information and communicate clearly, Gary Patterson spent a lot of time talking to his safeties when they came off the field with Ridwan Isahaku, Markel Simons, making sure they know their assignments are clear on everything and are communicating it to the guys in front of them. Spent a lot of time with the safeties because they are with a uh, without a couple of their starters there. Yeah, no Ennis Gaines may not see him the rest of the way. No Nico Small missing his third straight game. A lot of experience out on the back end. So communication, that much more important. Hollywood Brown in space again. And it will be third down. How hard is it to execute the communication against Big 12 offenses, especially, oh, that just goes so fast? So fast. And then this elite speed. And that's now a couple times that Lincoln Riley has got his 200-meter runner, like Turpin on the kickoff, just out there in that green grass. So you may have the right call. You may have even communicated it perfectly. But then you just have to react at the snap with these guys as lightning fast. The sense of urgency has got to be way, way up. Well, no team faces fewer third downs. And Oklahoma, this is the first third down they have faced today. They're going to try and run for it with Sermon. He won't get there. And now what do you do? Lincoln Riley in that gray area just inside the 35-yard line. Field goal range or go for it on no, third down he, and three? He, he made that call because he's going for it. That is a run that you would have loved to get seven or eight, and it springs out of there, but you know it's not going backwards with your offensive line. And now a very manageable situation, especially with the playmaking and the running ability of your quarterback. Fourth down and a long three. Play clock at five. Just get the snap off. There's the slant. C.D. Lamb's got it for a first down. And you saw the massive amount of communication by TCU defensively. And you see the movements and the shifts. And then ultimately, what does it come down to? Just a one-on-one -on -one slant. 
Just those one-on-ones where your guy is better than their guy. You just get inside of Julius Lewis there. And once you give a quarterback with the arm strength of Kyler Murray your numbers, he's going to move the chains. I mean, these two weapons, Lamb and Brown, are an absolute nightmare. And I don't care how much defense you've got in your playbook. Line. That's his first incompletion. He had hit on his first seven in a row. That is where they want him to play. They want to keep him right there. So often, Lincoln Riley moves him. And it may just be a little subtle movement on play action pass. But to create a lane and to get the D lineman and linebackers moving, it's a savvy little nuance in Oklahoma scheme. TCU would love for him to drop straight on that spot. They want to keep him in there as best they possibly can. Sermon into the secondary and into the red zone. Eight of nine. Yeah, the right side of this Oklahoma line. I mean, that, that is where Cody Ford and Drew Samia Samia all conference a year ago. That is where it is such an advantage. So many of these spread teams are just finesse, not with these guys. I mean, look at the size of those two 74 Ford, 75 Samia, and they maul. They don't want to. This is not your I'm going to two point stance and play patty cake. It is I'm going to physically embarrass you and move you off your spot. Sermon hit right at the line to game and it looks like he's a foot short. Ty Summers who spent his whole life as a linebacker basically shifted to defensive end because of need this season was there to make the stop. It's fourth down again for OU. No hesitation. We'll step aside for just a moment, tied at seven as they review that last play. Clock down to five, sneak. Murray under center. Quarterback sneak, moves the pile. And he's got it. That's a couple times they've done that. And I don't know why more people don't do it. If Tom Brady, who runs a 5-7-40, can get under center, and I know a lot of it is feel, but you're talking about a world-class athlete in Kyler Murray that has such athletic feel for everything around him. That's a good move and move the chains once again to fourth down conversions here for the Sooners on a very long drive by their measurements. Murray on a keeper. Gets to Mitch. First down. Inside the five, it's first and goal at the four. You know, we were watching tape yesterday, Bob, and I said, have you seen quicker feet? I mean, have you ever seen quicker feet play the position, especially recently? I mean, we have seen fast guys, especially in this conference. RG3 is a world-class sprinter. But as far as just the turnover, and I know I was really aggravating you yesterday. I'm like, count of steps? He's taking 12 steps and 10 yards. I mean, he has got amazing quickness and is so potent in that phase of the game. You aggravate me, else, <laughs> so that was just one on the list. <laughs> Sermon right up the middle, powers his way to the goal line, and Oklahoma answers with another touchdown. Well, that aggravates Gary Patterson on the other side. I mean, that is the longest drive. That's that's unheard of for Oklahoma to have a seven-minute touchdown drive, and Gary Patterson knows that you know <laughs> trying to handle this this team. You take the pass away, and then you've got a big, powerful back. That's on your, one of your best tackling defenders. And he just runs right through that tackle. Pads down. I think he crosses the plane. Because they will take a look at that as they review every single play. He's through, and that's just, you know, that, that's why this group's number one, number one, number one, number one in so many stats. Because what do you want to take away from them? Want to take away the pass? Great. Want to take away the one run? Well, good luck with a one-two punch of quarterback and tailback. Their longest touchdown drive by over two minutes for this season. That's, I think, as many guys out as they have as well. I don't know if you can ask for more. 
And this one goes through the back of the end zone. Our first opportunity to say hi to Cassidy Hubbard. First and 10 at the 25 for TCU. Wow. Jet sweep off the play fake. Darius Davis. A lot of work to pick up three yards. And a lot of pursuit. And look at the defenders for Oklahoma. Three, four guys there tackling. And that was a lot of the conversation. You know, when you're looking at Sean Robinson, you made changes to your defensive staff. What kind of juice are you going to play with? How much energy are you going to have? I said to you earlier, watch the D-line and then watch the pursuit. How many of those helmets are getting to the tackle pursuing? Alana Lua. And now it will be third down and five for TCU. In this first quarter, it's going to be critical. You can see what Oklahoma's done against everybody, basically. Texas a week ago went down with an opening scoring drive been so dominant making everybody play catch up and TCU struggling turnovers scoring differential early and that, by the way tremendous play by Gallimore on that second down run exactly what they need in the middle of this defense. Looks like a false start. That's on the senior. And for an offense that's struggling, they do not need to face third down and ten. Delay a game on the defense, number 11, made a non-football move, causing the receiver to react. It's a five-yard penalty. The yardage results in a first down. Wow. Well, again, we've got Jim Blackwood who is our officiating expert in the booth with us this week. A non-football move made by a defensive player. Explain that one. Well, it's it's a move that he in, uh, simulates, but he really doesn't make and cause the offensive man to pull. So the offensive man outside started forward based on his non-football move. Yeah, throwing the arms up in the air, you mean that's not normal coverage <laughs> technique? If it's designed false start. to draw a false start. Number 78. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. Well, now the false start called against TCU, but after the first down was given based on the defensive penalty, that was a big, big call. So now it's first and 15. I'll tell you what, though, that is a heck of a catch. Was on that yeah. one when the Rockets meet the Lakers later on tonight. LeBron's home opener. They lost their opening game on the road to the Blazers. As we start the second quarter here at Fort Worth, tipped ball, incomplete. Harrison Stewart was open on the little slant from Sean Robinson, but it got tipped at the line by Kenneth Mann, second and 15. And I know it was coming out of the quarter break, but just watch Oklahoma trying to get their call and line up. And just get yourself lined up too many times over the last few weeks. You can see the dominance there by Oklahoma in that first quarter time of possession. Get yourself lined up, but even late there. Middle screen, incomplete. It'll be third down and 15 as Turpin was not able to catch the low one from Robinson. This is a danger zone. This is an O line that's got a lot of inexperience. This is a defense and Ruffin McNeil's opportunity on third and extra long to find something creative. More than likely getting in those gaps, trying to show look and get out of it. Sooner show blitz. Now they'll back off. Only a three-man rush. Sean Robinson with all day. That ball's tipped and incomplete. Kenneth Murray in coverage got his left hand on it. Oklahoma gets the stop. Now it's not any spot any quarterback wants to be in. Eight defenders back there and a nice job by Murray here. The guy they call K-9 or at least Ruffin does nearly an interception. That's been another challenge, Jerry, for this defense. Just. Five takeaways on the year, one fumble. That's hard. You know how hard it is in six games to recover just one fumble. But a good third down stop to get the ball back. Nunez with a wobbly punt. Marquise Brown, fair catch just inside the 35. Oklahoma back to the offense with a touchdown lead. ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. 
handoff on first down to Kennedy Brooks. He's into the secondary. He has a first down, a gain of 11 and a half. I can't believe you don't think I blend in with the student <laughs> section here, Bob. Was Where was the purple offensive. lipstick? Where was the dedication? Hey, I was the one wearing cowboy boots in Fort Worth yesterday. That's you were rocking the sneakers. But thanks to the Dutchmen here. They're named after Dutch Myers, the spirit leaders here at TCU. And they taught me the cheer they've been doing since the 20s. It, actually, it's kind of a funny story. It started as they were making fun of Texas A&M yell leaders, and the gibberish turned into a cheer they still do. Uh, they haven't had much to cheer about defensively so far as Marquise Brown has another Oklahoma first down. And just, what, 13-yard run? And actually, look at that. He hobbles off. His lower leg got rolled up upon. That was a cool little wrinkle, little option route. Get the match on a safety-year linebacker. Nobody's going to cover him. Just look at the way they move him around. I'd like to see Jalen Rager on the other side. Get that opportunity. Be in the backfield. Be in the slot. Be outside. Get more opportunities. Get the ball to your best players. Tyler Murray over the middle. Calcaterra's got a catch close to a first down. And here's the tail end of that last play. You see the, yeah, oh. Ouch. That's a middle linebacker, Juwan Johnson. One thing Marquise has been is very dependable for a slight guy, usually because he's so fast, nobody can catch up to him. Johnson falling right on that ankle, something to watch. He has been Kyler Murray's favorite big plate target, Hollywood Brown. Off the field right now, and it looks like delay of game delay called game. against OU. On the offense. The offense substituted late. The defense was afforded an opportunity to match up. The play clock expired. Five-yard penalty, first down. Well, again, Jim Blackwood, our official in the booth. Good call. Good call, because they substituted too late. And it's the offense did. And it's not their response. It's not their responsibility. It belongs to the defense. So first and 15. Play action. Murray rolling. Gets loose. Down the sideline. Toe tapping and staying in bounds is Miles Teese. And he has a first down. And a flag thrown late. Another penalty marker just after the play was over. That might be men downfield. An eligible man downfield on the offense, number 56. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. That's going to be your center there. And on that scramble, those linemen get about a three-yard barrier, four-yard barrier. They'll give you a little grace. But unfortunately, as the quarterback scrambles here, you watch the center. They call it on Creed Humphrey. He doesn't know that. He's just working, working, working down the field. Yeah, and he's four yards past that line of scrimmage when the ball is released. So a must, you think, for the TCU defense now as they have first and 20 for Oklahoma back to the 40-yard line. Caught behind the line is Kennedy Brooks. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 20. Ben Banagoo has been quiet so far. He makes his first impact play. That's going to kill Kennedy's average. 12.8 coming into this game. Got 13 on his first carry. <laughs> but you're right. When you get a negative play on first down, that is what Gary Patterson said. First down is so critical to give you an opportunity to do what you want to do defensively. Only a three-man rush. Tyler Murray avoids a sack. A little stutter step in the open field. Checks to the sideline. And he's inside the 30-yard line before stepping out at the 28. Game 12 sets up third down and eight. You can see, Gary, that level of just containment, and it is so hard. Everybody says it, right, against a, a dual threat quarterback. Just keep him in the pocket. Well, just keep him in the pocket. It is so much easier said than done. right at the line to gain. And he may have taken himself back just shy of the marker. It looked like he caught the ball at the 20-yard line, but as he was turning, he took himself back about a half yard shy of the line to gain. So now it is fourth down, and Oklahoma will go for it again. And this has been sneak. You saw it earlier. 
and that has been the call thus far and not looking like it right now. Option. Kennedy Brooks, first down and then some. Inside the 10, at the pylon. He walks in for a touchdown. I can't tell you how good that is. And to do it so fast. You know, we talk about Gary Patterson's crew processing. How about that? How about you get up initially? It looked like a sneak. Nope. And Lincoln Riley's on the sidelines. Absolutely not. He's looking at the formation, too. That's why he's psyched. Because they check to exactly the right play. An advantage check, a one-on-one, -on -one, beautiful blocking down the field. I mean, this is pretty heady stuff. Kyler Murray, remember, is a first-year starter in this system, and he is in charge. The number one defense in the Big 12, powerless right now to stop the number one offense, so it seems. You know what else has been perfect? This offense. It's one thing to watch it on tape, but to see it in person in the level of just detail and execution and the chess match right now that Lincoln Riley is clearly defeating Gary Patterson. Pretty impressive. And a fair catch called for by Di Mercado, so that will bring it out to the 25-yard line. And tonight on ESPN. And Finley is that. Three years of experience in Eli Drinkwitz system. That'll be a wonderful matchup, too. On a rollout, Robinson. Long throw to the sideline. That looks like a short hop intended for Turpin. And that's a couple throws now low. You saw the previous possession. You know, one hops, a throw. This one, I like moving him. That's what Sonny Cumbie said. He wants to get this young quarterback feeling good. You know, a tremendous player in high school. The highest quarterback recruit they've ever had here. And they just want to get him feeling good. And the last two possessions going the wrong way. Penalty against TCU. False start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And that's a redshirt freshman flinching. A defense lineman, a dominant defense lineman at the high school level. Four-star recruit. And Wes Harris there, the right guard, just his third start. And this offense cannot afford any of these negative plays, and especially self-inflicted. it off play action low throw again and coming back to make the catch and get some of the penalty yards back as well is Turpin picked up nine third down and six look at the difference in the two QBs ripping it right those three those last two throws are just dying before that ball gets there and you can see the shoulder it's the non-throwing shoulder you know Sonny said it's not affecting his throwing motion but you're just not seeing a guy in any way that's ripping it the way he can Action again for Robinson. Floats one up the seam, and it's right through the hands of Khalil Houghton. Oh, that should have been about as easy an interception as Houghton will ever have. And it went right through his mitts. And that may be the decision that finally puts the backup quarterback in. I mean, that is just a move and a throw you cannot make. You're looking at the safety of the entire way. It's a good four-man rush, and it gets in his face. But that may just be the decision in the throw that gives Gary Patterson the opportunity to do what he's wanted to do. And that's give up the, the backup quarterback just an opportunity and for Sean Robinson to get on the sidelines. Rugby style kick and this one coming to the sideline not a good punt. This is not going to change field position at all for TCU as Oklahoma off the Nunez punt is going to. Handoff, Kennedy Brooks, seven yards on first down. And I thought we had a good conversation with Sonny Cumbie, who comes from the Mike Leach School, and you see once again dominant run play. And here's Kenny Hill, student assistant. And Sonny said he's been really good for Sean Robinson just from understanding, hey, a guy that also went through a tremendous amount of adversity and had to transfer schools and been through the ups and the downs and have a lot of relationship and conversation with Sean Robinson. That say anything to you that Michael Collins, the backup, just got on the phone? It, it really would to me. Get yourself ready to play. Brooks again. Wow. Kennedy Brooks into the open field. Inside the 10-yard line before he's finally brought down. 43 more. And it is Velcro at the line of scrimmage. We talk about space these receivers are in. I said to you, this is the best offensive line in the Big 12. They, they may make a statement around the country 
to the Alabamas and the Wisconsins and everybody else because it has been target practice for them as you see unfortunately Julius Lewis down for TCU. But these guys are getting what coaches love to say a hat on a hat and they're just swallowing up blockers. They love it and I love a team. As much as I love a quarterback throwing it my favorite teams are those that are dominated by the personality of an offensive line. Look at that. Look at the hole. They take such tremendous pride in not only protecting their quarterback but a run game that when those two things are going you're going to put up 600 yards in this building. Good to see Lewis able to walk off. I was talking to Bill Polian who of course works ESPN radio and NFL live all of our television shows about what the biggest problem right now in the NFL is identifying personnel. He said everyone always thinks it's the quarterback how hard well think about how many young quarterbacks there are in the NFL right now. It is a crisis for NFL personnel people yep. to try to find quality offensive linemen. And you wonder if this Oklahoma group at least in this league doesn't really stand. Well, those two are going to get a, a really good look. Sami is going to be a two time all conference player. Cody Ford is enormous in mammoth and I just love the pride they take in their workmanship. Take note college football programs. It starts at the line of scrimmage. Goal to go for Kyler Murray. Play action floats one into the back of the end zone broke it up. Well done by Noah Daniels who just came in for Lewis and he had the responsibility of trying to stay with C.D. Lamb. And that's not an easy play and off that heavy run. What do you do. Same action. You move everybody you play pass off of it and Kyler Murray can just throw from any angle. Probably won that one about a foot and a half further in front. But that's what's fun about this quarterback too. So when you fit him in and the option game and the speed game and everything else with what they do it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare even for a guy as good as Gary Patterson is coordinating on the other side. Quick hitter at the goal line into the end zone Lee Morris touchdown. Talk about a catch to touchdown ratio. Nine catches on the season for Morris now. Five touchdowns. Talk about cushion in a red zone. And probably worth pointing out no Ennis Gaines and no Nico Small. And there's really been no chance. But those absences on the back end of this defense. 11 career receptions for Lee Morris. Seven touchdowns. Did you take that percentage? Is the game really this easy offensively? They make it look that way. Boy, a playbook. Fourth and inches, you outnumber, you out execute. There's four offensive players there for Oklahoma, and add a fifth, and you get that two on one option game. That's all beautiful and gets the first down, but you get six because of the effort down the field. And Gary Patterson's been pulling his hair out on that sideline, frustrated with his guys in the secondary, not getting off blocks. But kudos to you, Miles Tees. 20 yards down the field, giving up 35 pounds, but your effort and energy scored the six. So it looks like Gary Patterson has pushed the button to change quarterbacks. Monte Turpin with a flag down. Another good return. Already brought back one for a touch, one out to the 43 yard line. We'll have to check. All right, thanks very much, Cassidy. As Turpin makes a simple 12 yard out catch from Michael Collins. The sophomore from New Canaan, Connecticut, transferred from Penn, getting a chance to play. And you can hear the crowd reaction. The backup quarterback can often be the most popular guy on any team when the starter is struggling. And here he is, out to the edge, and he just about got picked. Boogie, Boogie Radley Hiles had nothing but green grass out in front of him if he could have held on. The smallest guy you're ever going to see wearing 44. It like wraps around his body, but boy, do they love the guy they call Buki. And the true freshman there, he started from day one. He's an energizer bunny. He plays all over the field. I think he's at his best the closer he is to the line of scrimmage, reading and reacting, and nearly getting the sixth takeaway that Oklahoma is still searching for. If they add that level of takeaways with their offense, you'll see them in the Big 12 title game. Michael Collins wants a little tunnel screen. He's got Turpin down the sideline. At the pylon. Is he in for the touchdown? The officials getting together. It is a TCU score. Just a perfectly timed call. 
the screen and you actually and I've been highlighting the Oklahoma line I think he stays in there wonderful job of body control clearly crosses the plane. And does he have control of the football you know Bill Belichick doesn't let his guys do that. That's correct. For fear that that ball in any way is a fumble then it is a giveaway going out to the 20 yard line he has control of that that's a beautiful play and man to TCU this building that man right there coordinated his crew that's a change he wanted to see at quarterback. But that was much more about the execution of a perfectly timed screen pass than it was anything else. So from a screen that almost how, how it energizes a team a fan base a stadium. And you felt that even though it was a screen pass from Michael Collins, you just felt some juice in this building you've not felt for three weeks. Three time state champ there in New Canaan, Connecticut. And I, I don't know, he doesn't have the physical skill set, some of the things that Sean Robinson has. But it's amazing when the backup comes in, the ball just seems to bounce your way, and sometimes calls go your way. Now, to me, the question is what impact does it have on this defense? Can they finally get a stop? Because they have already in the first half allowed 288 yards of offense, and we're only midway through the second quarter. Four possessions, four touchdowns for Oklahoma. Is that good? Really good when you consider the defense they're going up against is number one in their league. Sermon flagged down on the near side of the field. He's caught behind the line. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men moving without completely setting. It's a five yard penalty. First down. Well, I thought Gary Patterson wanted to decline that penalty. I would think he would. It was a one yard loss on first down. Guys, Marquise Hollywood Brown is on the field for Oklahoma. He does have that left foot heavily taped on the outside of his shoe. You could tell it was bothering him. He was pacing on the sideline trying to stretch it out. But good thing is, even if he's slow to step, he's still going to be one of the fastest guys on the field. So Hollywood Brown back in the game. TCU does decline the penalty, second and 11. Quarterback draw. Murray tripped up behind the line. Garrett Wallow back to back tackles for loss and it's third down and a mile. That's really well played the former safety turned linebacker in the right call here. And this is a great chess match and if you're watching Oklahoma wondering why are they taking a little more time. It's because they're trying to get their guys Oklahoma against Wallow and these TCU Horn Frogs out of position. And Gary Patterson trying to call the right call to defeat that play and it's just a terrific back and forth and the third down that the Horn Fox have to get off the field. Only a three man rush. Murray has all day fires one right to the first down marker and look who makes an impact from the trainers table to a third and 15 conversion for Marquise Brown. And that is just right over the head of said linebacker. Flag down though. The illegal formation on the offense. Number 74 was lined up in the backfield. It's a five yard penalty. We play third down. What a break for TCU. They get another chance on third down and long. And that's Cody Ford, the right tackle. And look where he is lined up here to where the line of scrimmage is. And that is. That is typically a call that an official will tell that tackle beforehand. His helmet. Jim, where does his helmet be? You're that side judge. What is your evaluation? You're looking, you're looking for the helmet to break the waistline of the player next to him. And it doesn't there as Cody is way off the line of scrimmage. And you see he's adjusted here on this third and 20. And they'll run it with Sermon and just play to punt. Ty Summers makes the stop. An offensive touchdown, a defensive stop for TCU. Crowd back in the game. Interesting last six minutes here in the first half. Yeah, and if you're Oklahoma and you're Lincoln, Lincoln, you're thinking, man, that's that's tough. <laughs> we just beat ourselves there with a couple pre-snap penalties, not getting set. Pretty forward there, just continuing on a third and 15. He's just trying to gain a little bit of advantage, but that helmet just doesn't break the plane and the waistband of the right guard, and that's the first time we get to see the punting game. 
So Seibert from the goal line. With Devontae Turpin waiting near midfield. Late clock wound down. Delay of game. It's about the only thing Oklahoma struggled with. Been some of these penalties before the snap. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Any bye week rust in terms of a tempo team? Yeah, I, I mean, you'd to, think a tempo team to would say, be able to get it off inside of 40 yeah. seconds. <laughs> yeah, and I understand a little bit with the play clock because he's trying to get to the right play versus what Gary's calling, but not, not in this phase of the game. And now Seibert well into the end zone to kick it. TCU wants to set up a return for Turpin, and why not? He can be lethal. Will he get a block? Dance is free. Devontae Turpin directing traffic all the way down inside the OU 35 before he is brought down. Lieutenant Colonel Fisher is an Oklahoma grad. He said, I wanted to send him a piece of good fortune and good luck for him and his team. Lincoln Riley said, I was overwhelmed by the gesture. Shot to the end zone, drops in. Jalen Rager, touchdown. Speed, 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 speed. We said that it doesn't all just belong in Norman, Oklahoma. How about the statement made by Michael Collins? Backup quarterback takes a shot, back-to-back -back touchdown. Fisher, you can see after everything he's been through and still has to endure, how much that relationship and sense of gratitude from Coach Riley meant to him as well. Great story. Here's Trey Brown on the return. Barely makes it to us. We stopped ourselves with two pre-snap penalties that really did damage to the last drive. Draw play, Brooks. Hit at the line. Maybe gained a half yard. Another tackle for Garrett Wallow. A few times they've beaten those blocks. That time of the tight end fullback unable to get around was Carson Meyer. And here's Gary looking to the other sidelines. He's looking at the personnel group. He's looking at the lineman. He's given his call. You better do it in a hurry. Play action. Murray hit as he threw. It comes out sideways. It'll be third down and nine. L.J. Collier collapsed the pocket. And it's amazing what a quarterback change can do. Not just to an offense, but to a stadium, and even those defenders. Tremendous job by L.J. beating Bobby off the ball. Back-to-back -back plays. TCU getting to the edge and beating the Sooner offensive players. Third down and nine. Stay committed to the three-man rush. A flip out into the flat. Brooks, well short of the first down. Now to back-to-back punts for the OU offense. And TCU set up another return for Turpin. This time he'll call for a fair catch. In traffic, it bounces. Who did it hit? Flag out. Kick catch interference. Kicking team number six. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First and 10. And Jim Blackwood, that's a big call. What are the ramifications or what are the rules if you're a, a coverage player there, the room you have to give a punt return? If you if you attack, if you come to the front of him, you got to give him at least a yard. If you go to the side of him, you still have to give him an unmolested opportunity if he moves in either direction to make that catch. In any direction there, right? In and, it, and it's on you as that cover guy. You've got to give him that opportunity. And Trey Brown did not. So Michael Collins, he's thrown three passes, two for touchdowns. It's not bad. He'll hand one to Darius Anderson here. To the 42. Brought down by Houghton. I'll actually mark him down at the 43, so it's a gain of six. This is why Gary Patterson wanted to make the move. Not even as much as what Sean Robinson wasn't doing. That low what throw catch. scooped up by Stewart. And you can see Lincoln Riley, he's halfway on the field yelling, thinking that ball bounced from Collins, one of his first real misses of the day. 
Side judge right on it. He felt like the hands were underneath. But that move is not just about Sean Robinson. That move, and you make a move at the QB position, it is about an entire team as well as 50,000 in this building. Option. Collins holds on to it. First down and more. And it was a real difference of opinions because Gary Patterson, you know, in, in his mind as a defensive guy, says everybody's competing. He doesn't look at all the other nuances to it. Sonny Cumbie comes from the Mike Leach school of you don't take a shooter out ever, ever, ever. You let them shoot their way out of it. And there was some real conversation, I think, over the last few weeks. And ultimately, the head coach can and should win out when he wants to make that decision of change. Another keeper for Collins. Nice jump cut in the backfield to avoid a loss. He picks up three. Now, is it too much to put on a sophomore quarterback who was the backup? Too much to put on his shoulders to now ask him, hey, clock management-wise, let's slow down no. and not give up the ball before hopefully the last couple of minutes runs out no. here and don't give Oklahoma another chance? Yeah, and I think Mr. Patterson owns a lot of real estate over there, so I, I'm sure he is screaming his yelling after he wipes his face off <laughs> to make sure, yeah, you try to manage this and don't give Oklahoma any time back if possible, as they'll get the ball to begin the second half. Play action up, a handoff, and juking through the line is Anderson. And then by Kenneth Murray brings up another big third down. Yeah, and you control it right here. You run that play clock down, you make sure you get to the right call here. The momentum coming in. You've turned it. You've turned it in this building. You've turned it on your team. Your defense has got more juice than they've had all game long. And you can see it. They have. They've made that decision, that call coming in later to manage this clock situation. And they could wind it down well under a minute here. Still with all their timeouts. Third down and four. Breaking a tackle, but getting bottled up is Anderson. You wonder if Oklahoma might now spend a timeout. It's fourth down and three. Oklahoma has their timeouts. They're not calling them. So if you're TCU, just let the clock wind all the way down. That's right. And kick the field goal. Gary Patterson's looking over to the OU sideline. I think wondering, is Lincoln Riley going to spend a timeout? I'm a little surprised he's not, to be honest with you. And I know he gets the ball to begin the second half. But if I've got the number one offense going, and trusting my QB the way I am, I make that decision to find a way to get one more opportunity or put more pressure on Gary Patterson as well. And Gary Patterson will now call the timeout. Plenty of leg, plenty of accuracy, not just to the Big 12. Squib kick to try and keep it away from Brown. And Sutton. Murray's going to throw it with eight seconds to go in the half. He certainly has the arm to get it downfield. And now he'll just throw it away and go to halftime with Oklahoma starting the third quarter with the ball. The backup quarterback making an impact. Michael Collins pulling TCU within four after the break. It's the Capital One halftime sport. Before halftime, as we take a look at our first half stats, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Four possessions to start the game, four touchdowns for Oklahoma. They had a three touchdown lead, but TCU makes the quarterback. Was just too deep, too offset. That negated a third and 15 conversion and got to clean up the pre snap penalties of your Oklahoma. Touchdown kept TCU in it, and he gave them the short field a couple of times with other returns. And they'll run right into the heart of the TCU defensive front of Kennedy Brooks to start off the second half for two. And that's LJ Collier just crashing down. It was being pretty good. It was Gary Patterson, sore throat and all, telling Allison what change we tackled. Gary Wallow was tackling. Guys out of the secondary were tackling. Vanagu with a tremendous play on a third down swing route. Takes everybody. And you better tackle well in space against the number one offense in this league. Murray over the middle. Alcaterra right at the first down marker. By the way, when you look at our clock on our screen, if you don't see the play clock, it's because there's a problem with the play clock inside the stadium. 
here at TCU. So they're keeping the play clock on the field. Play clock doesn't come into play too often with either of these offenses. As on third down, they'll run that option. This got them the touchdown earlier, and it gets them a first down and more here with Kennedy Brooks. And you just outnumber your opponent. Right? It's the essence of option football. You just want to get a two-on-one somewhere and have you know, more offensive players than you do defensive players. And by the way, that shockingly was the first third down conversion of the game for the Sooners. 0-5 in the first half. It helped going three for three on fourth down, kind of negated that. But a third down conversion necessary out the gate. Looks again. Upended just shy of the 50-yard line. He's an avid chess player. Introduced to the game in high school by a friend. He actually says, believe it or not, it helps him see football a little bit differently. Well, I think a bye week also maybe helped this staff realize that Kennedy Brooks in that 12-plus yard average per carry coming into today need to get some touches and a few more touches, and he's been prolific. Tyler Murray finds Brooks in the flat. Right at the line of the game. And they'll say without measurement that is a first down for OU. Four man rush. Murray being chased. Floats one to the sideline looking for CD Lamb. Drops it in for a first down. We saw this earlier, first touchdown of the game, in fact, was a play that Murray breaks contain, and this takes two. This is out on the playground. It's a shallow cross that C.D. Lamb is so aware. Such a savvy player. Monster year, freshman All-American a year ago, and that is, I'm not just going to stay on my shallow route. This guy breaks contain, man. We're out on that playground. I put my arm up, and number one's going to find me. Quarterback run. Murray, he'll go down to the backfield. He'll take a loss of about three. Again, Jim Blackwood is our referee in the booth this week. And Jim, when the play clock is malfunctioning and the officials have to keep it on the field, what are the mechanics of that? How do the players know what the clock is at? Well, the, the back judge is the one that takes the play clock at that point because the quarterback's looking straight down. He can see. And at 10 seconds, he'll put both hands up like this. And when it comes to five, he'll do this. And then they know they just got five seconds. That's enough guidance for the quarterback then to know that the play clock is winding down. And those hands go above the head, both of them at 10, and then just one hand at five. Should not be a terrible issue for these teams. C.D. Lamb wants to throw it on the end around. Bottled up and has to throw it away. That's a really good play as he also gets it back to the down marker. And how many times do you see, well, actually in the game Thursday night, Nikhil Harry, big time receiver, run the same play, a double pass, and it's called. And you think, I got to throw it, I got to throw it. No, nope. you got to have the awareness. And you can see TCU on the back end of that. There is nowhere to go. Everybody is covered up. And does the right thing and the smart thing throw it away and save yourself 10 yards. There's Ben Banigou, preseason defensive player of the year in the Big 12, who stayed home. Awfully big play here, Bob. Awfully big play for both teams coming out of halftime. If you're TCU and can hold a field goal, and if Oklahoma can keep the pressure on. Kennedy Brooks, a pile up on third down. Inside the 20 yard line. And maybe they're just buying some real estate for Austin Seibert to kick a field goal as that was pretty conservative. It was real conservative. On a wide open offense on third and long. I'll say it again with a group up front that just blocked so well. A secondary for TCU that was without a couple of their veteran players. And Kyler Murray. Yeah, really conservative call on third and 14. 37 yards away for Cyber.
Back up to a touchdown lead for Oklahoma. 31-24, OU with three on the first drive of the second half. The potent. A surprise onside kick, a squib that's covered up. Heads up by Jalen Austin to cover it up. Great field position for TCU now after we check in with Cassidy. Thanks, Bob. Direct TV, more for your college football thing. Michigan, Michigan State wasn't a weather delay, but they're back in action now. Shea Patterson finds Nico Collins for the Wolverines' first passing TD against Sparty since 2011. Michigan up 7 nothing in the second, guys. All right, Cassidy, thanks very much. So great field position for TCU at their own 45 after what may have been a surprise onside kick. And a handoff to Olana Lua for a couple of yards as we check our Wrangler player spotlight. And they have continued to put Cavante Turpin in the spotlight. Why not? Look at the amount of total yards, 216 at 266. A senior saying enough is enough. This offense has been stagnant the last couple weeks, just 17 points. Going to do it in the special teams phase. And even on that tunnel screen, the huge play offensively to really ignite this group in a young quarterback. Over the middle, contested catch made by Tay Barber. True freshman is able to take the hit, hold on, and pick up a first down. Yeah, that's Khalil Hoffman. He's looking at it right in front of him at safety, and those are the plays that this group defensively, the collisions, they've got to make a step faster. Alana Lua lowers his shoulders and powers his way for about six yards. You know, quickly back to the onside kick. How surprised are you that Oklahoma pushed that button and gave up this kind of field position. A little conservative on the third down call. Going back and looking at it, there may have been a chance for Murray to pull that ball. That, that option, that was a little power read option he gave and ultimately settled for the field goal. And that's a look that you spend two weeks of a bye week preparing for. Alana Lua again. And what I mean by that is you've studied up TCU, you look at their return game, and he was trying to, it hit the ground, he's trying to get it up over that first wave and have his guys flying down to the second level and recovering it. But yeah, a very aggressive play after a fairly conservative third down call. And a very manageable third and short, exactly what you want to do with the backup that you inserted in this game that changed this game. Michael Collins on a keeper. Stiff off, first down. Was a leading rusher in that first half and you don't have to be a 4-4 guy you have to be willing to read and then more importantly you can see the undersized true freshman there he gets the palm does brendan Rayleigh hiles number 44 the true freshman and frankly he had one of the biggest well, non-plays of that first half he makes a pick six on a screen pass we may be never even looking at any of this as you see a wildcat formation alana lewis set to take the direct snap Bobbles it and throws the timing of the play completely off. And he gets thrown down behind the line, a loss of three. Mark Jackson made the stop for Oklahoma. That was actually a great catch. That was a really difficult catch, especially for a running back that is never in this alignment. You've repped this play. This is obviously in the plan, something you like. And he has to stick a pie out. Otherwise, that thing could have been 10, 15 yards behind you. Turpin circles in motion. Alana Lua gets to the sideline. Runs a man over. Oh, he went beast mode on that carry inside the 25. Down at the 24-yard line. And a lot of pre-snap candy there for the eyes of those Oklahoma defenders to lean to. And this has just been a straight little power game. This has been a, I want to make a statement. You're undersized, this Oklahoma defense. And I want to run it right at you here, the adjustment in the second half. That's the corner train Norwood that got freight trained by Shewo Alanalua. Low throw incomplete. Intended for Jalen Austin from Michael Collins. Fourth down and seven, and here comes the field goal group. Yeah, and he's holding his hand a little bit gingerly. That was a miss. That was a really, you see some of the same scheme. That's why I love prepping for this game. Lincoln Riley, Sonny Cumbie, it's the same school. So you put four guys into the boundary. You had the curl route, he just misfired. Cole Bunce from 41. Oh. 
just snuck it inside the right upright. We've got a four-point game again. And it's hello, because, hello, I'm wide open. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Through the back of the end zone. They were used to it for decades, but on hard times. And yeah, we'll see. And off to Trey Sermon. He picks up a couple. Those were just tackles you were not making in the first half. Ridwan Sahaku there flying in. Right, we just we just didn't see anybody. You're catching everything. You're constantly playing from behind defensively in that first half. And that may not look like a lot, a lot, but the difference of second and eight, just a two-yard gain, starts to set up what you want to do defensively. Look at all the check with me with all those defenders on the field as well. Play action. Murray out of the pocket and slides. Good coverage downfield for TCU, forcing the scramble from Kyler Murray and forcing another third down. Yeah, this is really close. I'm a little surprised you don't see a penalty at the end of this. QB clearly gives himself up. Now a big fella does his part. You see Corey Bethel right there. Bethel, he actually slides. He doesn't land with 300 pounds on the quarterback. I think that's a right no call. side to at least his second if not his third option on the play and is able to find cd lamb for a first down such a difference a picture of a young quarterback who had a curl flat on the other side the hello route and he just stuck on one you're exactly right he's looking all the way to the right he comes back across the field and it's the ball positioning it can be dangerous to look to one side of the field and come back you have to have a lane and then you better have perfect ball precision exactly what kyler has on a huge third down conversion and the play clock still being kept by the back judge on the field. Murray flushed out of the pocket. He's got another gear. Makes a man miss in the open field. And goes out of bounds inside the TCU 40. You know what I really love? He protects himself. You show your toughness as a quarterback by being available and being durable. And I think Russell Wilson, the best in the game at doing it, running, but will constantly protect himself. And that's the third or fourth time. You know, we have seen him today just, you know, take a seat in the pocket, slide, get, avoid, avoid that contact as those guys are gunning for you. Smart. Little Statue of Liberty backdoor handoff to Trey Sermon for a first down. How about that no-look handoff from Kyler Murray? Was that tricky? You can see it. He's just hiding it from the defense. <laughs> That's pretty good. Pretty good. Gonna be pretty poised. Not a lot of people around you. Well done. Bullet pass up the seam. Morris. Touchdown. 27 yards. All he does is what? Score touchdowns. That's it. And Gary's thinking we had him third and eight. I had him third and eight. And that little guy has done what he's done all season long. He responds. He reads the entire field. He gets a third down conversion and he moved those chains. The tempo team needs to see those chains move. Those chains move. He scrambles and then he throws a dart to the touchdown maker himself. At least two touchdowns passing in every game so far this year for Kyler Murray. That's his third today. And Oklahoma back on top by two scores. Just perfectly timed. You throw that deep over, you got to throw it right over those linebackers on a line and let Mr. Morris do the rest. This one's up at Ohio State. We'll have a statement in that as well before it's all said and done. But what a response from your QB. Bringing it from the goal line, Di Mercado. Good return. And a tough return as his momentum was taking him back to the goal line. Still gets it out to the 33-yard line. Now, we've got physical effort of getting run over. I thought they started with their hair on fire a bit, and they got to get back to that energy. Play action for Collins. Taking a shot down the sideline for Stevens. What a catch by John Stevens! Are you kidding me? He took it right off the helmet of Trey Brown. 47 yards. 
And it doesn't matter who is coordinating your defense. When you get one-on-one -on -one situations and your corner's out there on an island, they've got to make a play. And that's just an incredible, incredible effort from the freshman Stevens. Darius Anderson inside the 20-yard line for four. I think somewhere Sloan, his sister, is jumping up and down. And does John control it? Sloan Stevens, tennis player. His sister, that ball moves, but I don't think it ever hits the ground. He controls, controls, controls. That's a catch, and what a big-time play from the true freshman. They want to get more and more involved. Talented family, as good a play as you're going to see. And that's why you couldn't fire Mike Stoops, but your players on the field have to be the ones in one-on-one -on -one situations to execute. It'll toss forward. Turpin reverses field. Nowhere to go. He's going to lose four. Back outside the 20-yard line, eventually Kenneth Murray was there to bring him down as Murray and Bolton, they're the number one tackle duo in all of college football. You can see the red zone, like a lot of these areas, have just been a challenge. But finding those touchdowns and a little too cute. Previous possession, play goes haywire. You're trying to do a wildcat, bad snap at time. Trying to be a little cute. I think you're getting after this Oklahoma defense by doing your traditional traditional work. I don't know if you need those wrinkles, especially down in the red zone, an area of struggle. Turns underneath. It's Hunt couldn't hold on. And there again is another little picture. You've seen it on back-to-back -back drives. You know, Michael Collins comes in. He's played beautifully, especially all things considered. His first significant action on the previous third down, he's got Turpin underneath. That time, a three-man rush. And what would have Kyler done on the other side? He'd have created. He'd have moved around. And Michael probably will with more reps and more experience. That's part of the challenge of playing somebody that's not been in this environment ever before. Cole Bunce looking for his third field goal to make it a one-possession game again. From 38. Missed it wide right. Boy, after the deep catch from John Stevens to come away empty, hurts TCU. Problematic the last three weeks. Great QB name. Ty Gunn. Kennedy Brooks down the sideline. Managut trails him out of bounds, but not before Brooks gets across the 40 and picks up 22. Yeah, you add just another gear, and you've seen more of him today than you've seen at any point this season. Trey Sermon's gotten a lot of the carries, Sutton as well, but it's been a lot more. And I, again, I think that's reflective of a bye week, of some evaluation, of stuff scouting towards the second half of the year, and just another half step faster for Mr. Brooks. Keeper. Murray tries to turn the corner, almost runs into his own man. As Hollywood Brown couldn't get out of the way, he picked up a yard. Patterson continuing to coach up these young safeties. He told Trayvon Merrick Woodard, you have to stop staring in the backfield. It doesn't matter that you're a freshman. If they motion, you have to stop staring and be smart enough to look over and see what we're checking into on defense. There is so much processing for these guys. You think and you hear about a quarterback and his progression and everything else. These safeties in this system, and there's challenges any defensive player in college football when you play for Gary Patterson at that spot. Blitz coming. It's been rare today that they've sent the blitz. And the dump off to Calcaterra, bottled up by Wallow. A gain of about three and a half brings up third down and six. And as we're staring at that fourth quarter here in 90 seconds, this becomes truly enormous. I think I can count on one hand today the number of times that Gary Patterson has sent a blitz, a legit blitz, yep. after Kyler Murray. Yep. Because too often he burns you both with his arm and his feet. And they rush four here on third down. Murray off his back foot up the seam and complete for Brooks. And TCU gets a third down stop. And that's the spot they want him. They want him to make that decision. That's also why they've not blitzed Bob. They don't want him to move and get out. A, where he's so dangerous to scramble, but also has even more sidelines. They wanted him to play right behind that center as much as they possibly could, and that's a big, big third down stop. So even if he is in the pocket, 
and is unmolested. Yes. Just because he's in the pocket, it's a win for TCU. Yes, those windows get a lot harder to see at five foot ten. Low snap. Seibert with a wobbly kick. Takes a big Oklahoma hop. Inside the 20-yard line, down to the 17. Back to Cassidy. That American. Kudos to them. Three American teams ranked in the top 25 this week. Now that Rose Bowl win on the road to start the season for Cincinnati and UCLA doesn't look like a fluke anymore. Alana Lua. Hard working five yards on first down. Kenneth Murray made the stop. Two unbeatens in the ACC. NC State, Clemson, Death Valley. 3.30 Eastern today. Coming up shortly, 12.30 Pacific on ESPN. And the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Pretty big one for Trevor Lawrence, too. Got knocked out of his first start. Just lit up Wake Forest a couple weeks ago. We'll get a chance to see him down in Tallahassee and Florida State, but that will be a marquee matchup in the ACC. Collins taking a deep shot again for Rieger. Incomplete. Yeah, just a little more teaching tape again and experience. You can see the hand on the chest. He threw it to the right spot. A lot of times that post route with nobody in the middle, you leave too high and you allow the quarterback corner to cover the ground. This one's all about air. He's got the right spot. So this is trajectory. This isn't target. This is trajectory. And you just need more air. And especially with someone as good as Jalen and Michael knows it. Just give my guy a chance. That guy and all of my receivers today are going up and winning. That throw much too flat. Another big third down. Four man rush. Blind side rush coming. Collins has no idea. And down he goes. Curtis Bolton is able to get the sack. Oklahoma ends the quarter with a big play on defense. Haven't had enough of those, but he is their best blitzer. A perfectly timed stunt. And when Bolton gets an opportunity to feast on an inexperienced quarterback, he'll do just that. This couple of times a four-point game, and they're about to kick it back to Oklahoma down by two scores. And C.D. Lamb's going to let it hop. And it takes a good TCU roll. Run it with Brooks. He's down the sideline again. Another chunk run for Kennedy Brooks. He came into today with 192 rushing yards on the season. And that is so good from Drew Samia, the right guard. I just watched a TCU group not pick up a pass down. And when you're doing it and run at full speed, as Samia does there, he not only blocks the first guy, the little line stunt comes in, he mows him out of the way, and that is a lane that Allison on the field is running for 15 through. Even in her cowboy boots. <laughs> 146 for Kennedy Brooks. And he'll try for more here. And he'll get two more. Brought down by Garrett Wallow. Now, we've seen Oklahoma Sooner offenses over the last few decades loaded. And I mean loaded with NFL dudes. But when they've been their best, it's when they've got some studs up front. It's not just a receiver and running back and quarterback. It has been all conference play. I think they're going to have three all conference players. I think right tackle, right guard, left guard. Ford, Samia Powers. I think all those guys are all conference. And, and Evans, even left tackles pushing. to keep his feet underneath him and pick up another first down. Down to the 33, he's got 14 more. Yeah, and that's right through Garrett Wallow, the middle linebacker, converted safety. He's only 205 pounds, you can see it. He's in position. Gary Patterson, if he could talk right now and he can't because his voice is gone, he would say this is the difference. <laughs> in the first quarter, we didn't tackle. Here in the fourth quarter, you know, starting to get probably worn down a little bit by this heavy run, this big offensive line, and that's a tackle you got to make and one that Brooks Ran through on a career afternoon. Well, the redshirt freshman just about doubling his rushing total for the season. And they'll go to Trey Sermon. He has a cutback lane. Sermon inside the 15. Stays on his feet for the OU touchdown.
statement drive by Oklahoma. Just keep it on the ground and wear out the TCU defense, and they just did. Yeah, they dominated the opening quarters of games, and then they finished. And even that shootout down three touchdowns in the fourth quarter made the comeback all the way back to ultimately lose by a field goal, and Gary knows it. You know, he's looking at two and eight against these guys and ten matchups with them. Nobody, nobody has tested him and done that to his defenses. But when you run and throw it, hard to defend. Kennedy Brooks with 163 yards rushing. Sermon's got 88 and two touchdowns of his own. 302 on the ground for Oklahoma. Been here yelling at him. No! Two points, <laughs> my team! I just hit the button. <laughs> Through the back of the end zone on the kick from Cyber. Incredibly physical affair down on the bayou. Collins to the sideline, broken up. Well diagnosed by Trey Brown, he jumped in front of Rager. You know, we watched a quarterback change ignite the team, a, a building and everything else. You're seeing in that play right there by Trey Brown. I think you see this defense is going to be infused by their offense. And just that but symbiotic nature between them that you, you always think about. You look at all these stats of offense or defense and you put them in a vacuum. They're not. Many times the play of your, you know, your buddies on your team can ignite you one way or the other. Keeper for Collins. Has a first down. Out to the 42-yard line. Still a lot of time on the clock. 12 and a half minutes to go. And I will say this for Oklahoma and for Lincoln Riley, who made that coordinator change. Your group defensively has got to be more physical. They've got to get bigger and stronger in time. Speaking of which, Darius Anderson runs for another TCU first down, picks up 11. And that's pretty emblematic of it in that front seven. Too soft too many times. You can stream college football all season long on ESPN+. Plus. So start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. And I like these calls. And you've seen both coordinators who love to throw the ball. You've seen them really over the last 10 minutes of action do an awful lot of running. They were looking for the wide receiver screen to Rager. And it wasn't there as the pressure came from Neville Gallimore. So a smart play by Collins just dirts the ball. Second down. Yeah, this effective earlier, a tunnel screen for a touchdown, and you see the right call, a, a, a front side blitz, a zone dropper back. The Lincoln Riley, one of those rare head coaches that calls plays, and I'll tell you, I love his patience. I love that he's got so many weapons, but in this game, when the game was really on the line, over the last three or four possessions, he's been willing to do this, run the football. Anderson makes it a manageable third down and three. And Sonny Cumbie doing the same, and both of them do it a hundred times more than Papa Leach in Pullman, you know, who just doesn't typically do that very much. And the right hand, an issue for Collins. Wow. Yeah, that is a feel and pain issue. He's fighting through it. Although they'll try to run for it with Alana Lua. And they've got another first down. Stop made by Kenneth Murray. Well, TCU has a chance to make this a two-possession game again. Very important drive as we approach 11 minutes to go. They play with tempo. Alana Lua tries to find some running room and picks up two. And I think that is worth watching on the quarterback. I don't know, I can't say and, and look at the deep ball that he missed, but that totally affected it, but yeah, he knows it. And if it gets to a point, obviously, where you just don't get feel, you know, your thumb, more on your thumb than necessarily, <laughs> he's not looking at any water to it. It's more your thumb is where your grip is, necessarily more than the, the padding of your thumb that is just ripped for him, but any of that can absolutely get in the way, and you see that's, that's uncomfortable. Any chance you could put a glove on it as quarterbacks over the last eight to ten years or so seem to be more and more going to a glove on the throwing hand. I don't know if I'm giving high fives to my buddies. Yeah, I think Tom, <laughs> Tom Brady probably the one in a playoff game that got a gash that required stitches and everything else and played through it. And this is a uh, this is one of the more significant factors to me on this defense too. Neville Gallimore we've not called his name a ton. But he's one of the rare 
330 pound guys that they've got in their defense in that front. It's just got to be more of a factor. You know, as I studied this tape and, and you know, watched them defensively and especially that Texas game and then talking to people in and around their program, you know, you made a change. You made a change defensively. And to me, it wasn't as much scheme as it was just your physical presence in your front seven that has to grow. Play action. Collins. Inaccurate throw. He had Tay Barber and led him a bit too far. Five straight incompletions for Michael Collins. Yeah, and that, that's bothering him. That's really bothering him. And it's really hard to say exactly that is why he's misfiring, but when he's focusing on it and he's concentrating on it, any distraction, not a good thing for a young quarterback who's never been in this spot. And now a big third down. Quarterback draw. Are you calling that play on third down because you think you're going to go for it on fourth down? And because you missed five throws. Because you're just not in rhythm and feeling good about that passing game. But yeah, you've, you've got to go here. At what point do you think maybe going back to Sean Robinson becomes an option if his hand is just too injured? Yeah, I think the first thing you're exactly right. I think you may try a glove before you make that move. Well, they're going for it on fourth and seven. Three-man rush. Collins gets out of the pocket. He's going to try and run for it. He gets cut down. Well shy of the line to gain by Parnell Motley. Oklahoma takes back over. Courageous effort from Michael Collins. Just didn't have the chance to get there. Back to the offense for Kyler Murray. And TCU has to get a stop on defense. Sermon. Five yards on first down. And there's your run again. All these fun weapons. And it's great to have toys, isn't it? But ultimately, you need the foundation, and the foundation of any great offense is the line, is the line of scrimmage. I said to you earlier, Bob, if I could choose a personality of a team and a position group that's the most dominant, give me an O-line. Give me an O-line. They start games fast. They love to close games out. I, I just love the, the mindset. You just see it. They, they take pride in their craft. And when you can lean on those five guys in that group, you have yourself a chance every week. They'll run it again with Sermon. He's got another first down, dragging tacklers to midfield. Again, the play clock is being kept on the field by the back judge. That's why you don't see it on the screen. But Kyler Murray sees the back judge. And he puts that hand up, knows there's only five left on the play clock. So they are now able to work the clock. Yeah, and whether it's Sermon or Brooks, you know what they see? They see some gaping holes. They see Samia and Ford and Humphrey and Powers and Evans and those guys up front. Even again on that last play, you got six in the box. Doesn't matter. Those guys are owning their initial block and they're getting to the second level and creating so much movement. Trey Sermon. This time brought down right at the line of scrimmage, but he has 110 yards rushing. Trey Sermon walking off a moment ago could not put much weight at all on that right leg. Of course, Oklahoma lost Rodney Anderson, who was an 1,100-yard rusher last season back against UCLA earlier this year, and Ridwan Isakahu went low at Sermon there. So now Kennedy Brooks back in. He's had himself a day. Brooks on second down from midfield, barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Juwan Johnson made the stop, so a must third down stop here for TCU. How about 41 rushing attempts for the Sooners today? Here's Kyler Murray, here's Hollywood, here's all this speed, CD and everything else, but they know. 
But if you're going to play two safeties and you're going to do all that you want to do, you're going to commit to running the football 41 times, 24 passes. That is it. And Mr. Patterson and crew. Stay conservative. It'll be fourth down and at least six, if not seven. That's taking another 40 seconds off. And how many times, Bob, are you yelling me in this booth? On and off the air, by the way. Well, not a year, necessarily. But why do these tempo teams not use the clock? Why, 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 why? All the time. And look, hey, case in point right here. Lincoln Riley either must have heard you or just knows that the worst thing you can do is stop this clock, keep chewing it up. Shorten this game. Is that a good impersonation or unfair? Yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> but you do. Game management for a lot of tempo teams is often butchered, and that was not. You can tell tempo teams oftentimes just practice tempo, and sometimes the game calls for slowing it down. Oklahoma, well, they have done a really good job of grinding the clock down, and now on special teams, they do a really good job. Well coached. Down to the two yard line, a 45 yard punt. TCU quarterback Michael Collins showing some grit. This is earlier in this half. Sliding out of bounds, that right arm extended, and it looks like it catches on the edge of the tarp. It tore open the padding on his right thumb. They tended to it earlier when he was on the sideline, put some new skin on it, a clear bandage as well. But that whole padding on his thumb, guys, is torn open. And he is trying to gut it out from the end zone here, throwing a stop and go down the sideline, underthrown and incomplete. Intended for Rager. Trey Brown was there. Yeah, and I, I think that is impacting him. That was a beautiful route. And, and I love getting your best players involved. It was actually a deep out, a throw. His first completion came in, came in one, of the, one of those out routes to the field. And that's one and where that most affects you is just your grip. You just don't trust your grip to both rip it. And then on that one, that's got to be a, that ball's got to be in there 50 plus yards with the speed of Rager and just woefully underthrown. He's missed on six straight. Low throw. Incomplete. Turpin couldn't scoop it up, and it hung in midair just for a moment behind Curtis Bolton, who didn't know it was there. Yeah, and again, just back-to-back -back throws. Well timed little option route. Everything is right in front of you. It's just low in behind. And the first one could have been 99. I mean, Rager has got a step. That one could have been a 99-yard touchdown pass. And as much as it's also that thumb, you know what it is? It's adversity, too. When you come in as a backup, you said it perfectly. You're the best friend of everybody. Stadium lights up for you. It's so much fun. Touchdown on the tunnel screen. It's a little harder when adversity starts to hit you along with that thumb injury. Accepted. Picked off by Motley. Parnell Motley out of bounds inside the five. And a lot of purple shirts in this stadium just got up and started to head towards the exits. Kind of a similar concept there, a little option route. The first one you saw the misfire. This one he's expecting receiver to run. Receiver does the right thing. He settles down. He can feel the corner outside. Look, he settles it down, but the quarterback loses sight. He loses awareness and vision of everything around him. And Motley with just the sixth takeaway of the season for Oklahoma. But it comes to closing time. And for Michael Collins, more and more experiences to bank. A lot of them positive early. But obviously, that one sends folks home. So a chance for Oklahoma to extend the lead. High formation with Kennedy Brooks. And behind the line. Got down to the two yard line. You know, you hear a lot of times, especially maybe even more so in baseball, the game speeds up on you. 
And I think for Sean Robinson, the, the normal starter here for TCU through the first half of this season, you saw that. You felt the weight of everything, the game speed. Now Michael Collins comes in, and when you're the backup that can do no wrong, stadium's cheering for you, you're not thinking about any of that stuff. And Kyler knows as a baseball player how games can speed up on you, and you just watch his game today. And as the moments get a little bigger, as a little adversity hits, you just see the field, man. Everything around you starts to speed up and fly. And the game catching up a little bit to the inexperience of Collins. To the one-yard line goes Brooks. I'll be fascinated to watch Kyler Murray. Just in the years to come as a top 10 baseball player, to do this and to make this game look so easy as a first year starter, to fill the shoes of Baker Mayfield and everything he did for year after year after year. Count me as one that's going to watch him just competitively and athletically what he's going to do for the Oakland A's. Murray to the back of the end zone. Touchdown. It is Carson Meyer. And he holds on, took a hit. As Banagoo with some good sportsmanship for Kyler Murray, his fourth touchdown pass. Yep. Well timed, well conceived, and Banagoo, that little arm around is, dude, you're just a baller. Is he limping, favoring a little bit as he's coming off the field? He's just a gamer. I mean, he's just a guy that has played so much ball in his life. Football and baseball and basketball. His dad was a stud quarterback at AM. And you just know those guys, like Trace McSorley. You know, when Trace McSorley came on the scene, we said the same thing. He's just, the guy has just got game. But ultimately, in his heart of hearts, he knows that 52 against Kyler is not going to be uncommon this season. Guys, a lot of coaches have a get back. Coach Patterson has what I'm calling a get your voice back, Coach. This is Whitney McCartney. She's a member of the equipment staff. She's tasked with following Patterson throughout the game. One of the things she always makes sure she has, throat lozenges. Patterson notorious for losing his voice during the course of the game. And not only is he constantly yelling, he's constantly pacing as well. She wears a step tracker. She said she'll do as much as 6,000 steps during the course of the game. And remember, that's all 25 to 25 yard line. He's constantly on the move. I checked with her at the half, and he's on pace to hit his mark. He was at about 2,500 steps wow. at the half. <laughs> I like the sweat towels. You see the one in the, in the back pocket, pocket too. You got to always be prepared. Collins gives to Di Mercado, and he's out to about the 35-yard line. I know you said that the Oklahoma defense fed a little bit off Kyler Murray and how the offense was producing, but did you see a difference today now that Ruffin McNeil has taken over and maybe their at least preparedness or readiness of the snap? Possibly. Okay. I don't see whole, I can't sit here after 60 minutes and say, wow, wholesale changes. You know, we had Florida State earlier this year, and I saw wholesale changes for them. After so much struggle, they simplified things greatly. Maybe a little bit more simple today. There's still some line stunts. Uh, largely guys have been in position. I guess you could say that in these 60 minutes. You have not seen busted coverages. Have you seen guys beat on the perimeter? Yes. Will you continue to in this conference? Yes. But really, all they've got to do is just be competent on that side of the ball. Right? You don't have to shut people down. A takeaway here, change field position there, a stop every once in a while. And this offense is going to be good enough to carry you back to that title game. They run the option, the pitch out to Di Mercado. And he is short of the first down by a yard. Khalil Hall made the stop. And kick off your week seven Sunday NFL countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN tomorrow. The crew breaks down how Tom Brady and the Patriots can take advantage of Khalil Mack and the new monsters of the midway. Plus, Randy Moss ranks this week's best catches from college football. And you got Mossed. Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning on ESPN. I will say one more thing too, the effort and just some of the energy and some of the pursuit. And I'll tell you, if Brendan Radley Hiles takes that pick six that he had in his hand and yep. he catches that thing and this game's 35-7,
we may be having a different conversation about that defense. But I thought all in all, effort pretty good. Is this Oklahoma team a college football playoff team, though, in your opinion? When you start to look at the top five to seven teams in America, are they on that level? I think Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, I think they've got all more balance. And then you get kind of beyond them, and you get to LSU, maybe Notre Dame. I, I'd probably put a step ahead as far as just a balanced team. But you look at that schedule at Texas Tech, it's always difficult to go into Lubbock. We'll see whether or not Cliff's got enough healthy bodies there. They'll be favored in every one of those games. And obviously, West Virginia at the end. Weather conditions, but that's where your ability to run the ball, especially offensively. If they play to their ceiling, they'll be in the Big 12 title game. If they play to their ceiling, and we'll see whether or not Texas can do it over the back half of this season as well. But that's a, that's familiar territory. They've won 11 of them. You know, they're very used to that. They're very used to having that mindset of a playoff begins now. What I thought was interesting about the remaining schedule is our FPI has them at least 65% to win every individual game, but the same metric says they're only 20% to run the table and win them all. Sure. So it just goes to show you, you can be right now, at least on paper, a decided favorite against all the remaining opponents, but just because there's so much football to play, that same metric says yep. you're a one in five shot just to win yeah. those games, and they have to win them. We know that. They're not making the college football playoff with another loss. And I think that's because those analytics and the algorithms look at just some of the defensive inefficiency and kind of look at those numbers and realize, you know, run the ball, play elite defense had been more than 20%, but that elite defense has been the harder part. Sports Center with SVP after Rockets Lakers and after the buzzer on ESPN. Kirk Herbstreit will join the show. He'll break down the day in college football, a recap of how the National League pennant was won, a World Series preview tonight. Sports Center with SVP after the NBA at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Gary Patterson falls to 2-8 and eight against these guys. Spin his nemesis. It's about it. About everybody else he's had his way with. There'll be a lot of now conversation about the quarterback position and what you do moving forward. If you're TCU as well, I think you're talking bowl game this year. That has got to be the, the goal and a lot of the conversation. And for Kyler and crew, they're absolutely talking playoff. And they got enough weapons offensively with Lincoln Riley to do some damage here in the back half of the season. Well, Lincoln Riley has an offense that's just a machine with Kyler Murray running the show. And we'll certainly keep our fingers crossed for the health of Trey Sermon. They already lost Rodney Anderson earlier this season to an injury, but they're loaded in the backfield still have a stable of running backs and a different level playmaker yeah. quarterback. It's hard to find a better schemer that knows how to utilize all that personnel and is patient enough to play to the strengths of his team as well. For Brock Ewart and Allison Williams, I'm Bob Wischusen. 52-27 Oklahoma wins here in Fort Worth over TCU. So long from Fort Worth. I'm going to send it to Kevin and the guys in the studio.